welcome back to Love Your Food. This week we're doing a little bit of a repeat, honestly. We're doing a bechamel sauce. Now, quite a while ago we did a video on a roux through a bechamel to a Mornay sauce that we did for our macaroni and cheese video, but this time we're really focusing on the bechamel. This is a very full-flavored, herbed, and uh, infused bechamel, and here's our ingredients. So, starting with some milk, a shallot, some onion, some cloves, some fresh herbs. We've got some parsley, a bay leaf, some tarragon, some rosemary, some chives, and some fresh thyme. Of course, we're gonna be using some butter and some flour for the roux and some uh, dry vermouth as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is get some of these beautiful fresh herbs ready. Now, you can see we're not actually taking the stems off of these. We're just sort of chopping them roughly because we're gonna be steeping these in the vermouth to really uh, extract that aroma and uh, really reduce that flavor. Uh, give it a really, really intense herbal flavor with that uh, beautiful dry vermouth that we have. So this is gonna go onto our um, onto our element over here. So in goes the vermouth. Now we wanna control the heat on this one as well, so we're gonna use the induction burner for this. And in goes the, uh, the beautiful fresh herbs. And a little bit of salt, just to sort of help some of those juices and aromas come out of those fresh herbs. Now we're also gonna use the shallot here, so we're just gonna chop that up pretty small. And we wanna, uh, again, extract the, that beautiful flavor into, these, uh, into the vermouth. And then we're just gonna give that a little stir. You can see the steam starting to come off it as well. As well. So we're actually going to um, be reducing this to what they call au sec, which means until it's dry, which means it's gonna look like there's no liquid left, but you'll see there's still gonna be some left and we'll have enough for this amazing flavorful addition to our bechamel sauce. Meanwhile, we're gonna start our roux, which of course is gonna start with melting some butter. So once that butter is completely melted, we're gonna add in our flour. And now's a great time to uh, keep an eye on this. You really want to make sure that you're keeping a good eye on this. Uh, too much heat here or not stirring enough will cause some scorching and burning. Meanwhile, you can see this reducing. That can safely reduce until it's much, much lower. And now we're gonna get some of our other flavorings ready. So we're gonna take half an onion and we're gonna make what's called an onion pique. And uh, it's literally pinning the bay leaf to half an onion with cloves. And uh, we're gonna add this to, to the bechamel again to extract some flavor into the bechamel sauce. Meanwhile, you can see the uh, roux has really sort of frothed up, which is great. That means the uh, water is boiling out of the butter and the flour is cooking. And once you've got that beautiful uh, frothy uh, mixture, you're gonna start slowly adding your milk. Now, you want to add it slowly, and each time you add some, make sure that it is completely incorporated. Now, this is gonna help remove or reduce lumps in your final sauce. If you don't wanna to have to use a blender or a tammy or something to, uh, to make sure your sauce is smooth, you want to do this very gradually and keep, uh, add, keep incorporating it completely before you add the next bit. Another thing that uh, helps reduce lumps is adding cold to hot. So even if it's room temperature, it's still gonna be a better temperature than, or a lower temperature than what you're cooking. So once you've got all your milk and uh, everything added in there, you're gonna add in your onion pique. Now you'll, you can see here, it's quite thin for, for this kind of sauce, but that roux is really gonna thicken things up as it cooks. Meanwhile, this looks pretty much dry. You can tell there's not a whole lot of liquid left in there. There is still some. This is perfect. So that's done. We're gonna take that off the heat and let it sit because we're gonna be adding that uh, into our bechamel a little bit later. We also wanna add in the same amount again of fresh herbs that we had before, but this time we're gonna be a little more careful. We're gonna be removing any of the woody stems any of the softer stems that uh, just sort of break off in your hand. We can leave those in and we're gonna chop this pretty finely. And this is just gonna really double up that, uh, that really beautiful herbal aroma to everything. And there you go, we've got our beautiful chopped herbs. Again, we're, we're chopping these really, really finely. And it's all the same stuff that we had before. Meanwhile, uh, once our sauce has thickened, you can see here it is very thick now. As I told you, it was gonna to cook together. The onion pique has fallen apart a little bit, that's fine. 
We're going to add in a little bit of cold, fresh butter. Uh, to uh, to monter à beurre, which is to to lift with butter, uh, which is a classic in French cuisine. We're going to start removing some of these flavor compounds. Again, we want this to be nice and smooth because it's a bechamel sauce. Which, uh, it's supposed to be beautiful and smooth. So we're going to pull out the onion. We're going to pull out the bay leaf. We're going to pull out these cloves very, very carefully without removing too much of our sauce and stir in that butter that is already melted, you can see. Now we're going to strain in our uh, our vermouth that has had those beautiful herbs steeped in there. This is such an amazing flavor. I can't really explain it to you. Uh, we had this excellent vermouth, although just any dry vermouth will work for this. We had a really excellent locally produced one here and uh, it was delicious. So we're straining that vermouth with those herbs into our bechamel. We're going to try and keep out all of those cooked herbs and shallot and everything. We don't really want that in our sauce because it's not a great color, but we do want as much of that liquid as we can get. So we're just going to push that through a strainer, a uh, really fine strainer as best we can. Now don't worry if that looks like it's just a lot of liquid in your bechamel, it will incorporate and it won't make it any less thick. Don't worry about that. So we're just going to give that a little stir. We're going to add in our, uh, our fresh chopped herbs as well. And then we're just going to combine that. We're just going to mix everything together and uh, combine it until everything's well mixed. And this is on a very, very low heat at this point. You really don't want a whole lot of heat here. Uh, it can still burn, obviously, very easily because it's flour and butter. And uh, once everything's well combined, it's a really great time to give it a taste. Does it need anything? Does it need a little salt? Uh, some people like to punch that up with a little bit of like Tabasco sauce or something, a tiny bit of uh, something sour, like an acid in there, like vinegar uh, is amazing. And here's how we're going to use it next week. We're making some amazing Monte Cristo sandwiches with some of that beautiful bechamel sauce. So once it's all mixed together and it's done, you can take that off the heat. You can put that in the fridge. It's going to thicken up amazingly. It's such an amazingly aromatic and flavorful sauce of obviously extremely rich. Uh, it's all butter. <laughs> which, you know, is very much French cuisine, but it's uh, such a great sauce. It goes with so many things. Uh, we're going to put it on top and inside of these Monte Cristos next week, and, uh, and that's it. So if you like this recipe, please do like and subscribe. And if you have any recipes you'd like to see Chef Caleb try on the channel, please let us know in the comments below. And remember to love your food.